Welcome to Discourse, that's Abel, and this is Tony, and today we're talking about The Last Duel by Eric Jaeger. It's a historical novel um, that's based on fact that the author, Eric Jaeger, fills in the empty spaces with a little bit of creative fiction mm -hmm. from what he learned of reading all of these historical accounts. It takes yeah. place in the 1300s, the duel is in 1386. And what this is, is about two nobles in France mm -hmm. fighting it out over one of the nobles raping the wife of the other noble. So it was an accusation. So it was an accusation. Mm -hmm. And since the court wasn't able to verify who was telling the truth, mm -hmm. they say that they must fight it out in a duel, a sanctioned, government sanctioned duel. And yeah. that's what this book is about. It's about... The Cor Jean Corgus's family, Jean Legris's family, uh, how they are connected through history, uh, the event that happens to Marguerite, Jean de Corgus's wife, how she gets raped, and then the court proceedings, mm -hmm. and then the battle, and then a little bit after the battle. So this story Correct. is just about that event that happened between these two families. And, and I guess there's a lot of different stories, different sides of it, but what the author does is they collect a lot of notes, a lot of information, and they put it all together and filling in the empty spaces, as you mentioned, you know, to this book, which it, it, all, it, it all flowed pretty well. Yeah, yeah, it flowed pretty well. It, in the beginning, it was kind of hard for me to get through because I was like, is, just, is this just going to be historical facts yeah, and figures? it starts or? off that way. It starts off very dry, but once you get into like chapter two and three, it gets very entertaining because then all the characters are placed, then all yep. of the time, the setting is placed, and you're in the story, and he's focused on just these two families. Yep, exactly. And I, I don't know if people were suing each other back then. It seems like most yeah. of the book was accusations and going to court. You going know, to court. Human beings have been litigious <laughs> throughout history. Yeah. Uh, so apparently yeah. France in the 1300s, had a robust legal system and there was even lawyers that represented people and yeah, laws yeah, that everybody that's right. followed. That's kind of what happens, right? So Jean de Corrigus mm -hmm. and Jacques Legris are both squires in the beginning. Yeah, and they were both friends. And they were both friends. Jacques Legris, well, I guess we'll call him the bad guy. Jacques Legris yeah. rapes Jean de Corrigus's wife. So Legris mm -hmm. is the bad guy. De Corrigus is not necessarily the good guy. <laughs> But he's at least the one defending his wife's honor throughout this story. And de Corrigus feels like he's being slighted by his lord, Pierre, I think he's called, right? Count Pierre. Count Pierre. So. And he feels like Legris is getting one up on him. So Legris's star is rising and de Corrigus's yep. star is falling. And so there's some animosity there. So Legris, I don't think they really say why he does it. But he uh, corners de Corrigus's wife while she's alone in oh, a home. They do mention it. That's because as Legris is going up in status, he becomes the favorite. Count Pierre. Count Pierre. And he gives him land, status with the king, and he's invited to all these parties and like it's like being invited to the White House or whatever, yeah. to like Hollywood parties while the courage is he's just left behind, you know, just another guy, even though they held the same status. And over time, Allegris, he keeps being accused of stealing land or being accused of being a womanizer, all of these other things. I think he gets fed up and that's when he yeah. decides to hurt this guy back. They're constantly going at it in court for different yeah. pieces of land, that's true. But they are definitely different people. Legris is like a womanizer, he's a people pleaser, he stays in court in France, in the royal court, making friends, making political connections, while de Corrigus uh, goes out on the battlefield and Cause... finds his success fighting the English. Yeah, yeah, that, that's kind of funny when you mention the English because there's a history of England and France, you know, having battles, having wars, but in the book, the Corrigus just goes to England for like a raiding party, hey, it's raiding time, like yeah. it's that type of season. <laughs> So have you ever seen uh, the movie or the TV show Outlander? No. So in Outlander, did, uh, this medic woman from World War II travels to the past, mm -hmm. in, to Scotland, and it, there they are fighting the British with the help of French people. Uh, that's kind of what happens with oh. de Corrigus. He goes yeah, they explain that. to uh, Scotland to help the Scots fight the Brits. They go on raids. And, and, that's yeah. kind of how these two stories are connected. Yeah. It's very interesting. So he, yeah. go, he goes there and he initially has some success. 
Yeah. Uh, but then has complete failure. Starts going bankrupt. And must come back. Yeah, I, I just found it funny how they just get up and decide the sun is up, it's good weather, let's go fight some English. Yeah. Just cause. Like, Medieval times, man. You they don't declare war. war, they just go across the channel and start fighting them. <laughs> yeah, because they, they, they mentioned that that's how they that, that's how they make money, right? Like they yeah. raid a town, raid a castle, mm -hmm. and they take all the money and then get out of there. That's how you make money. Yeah, and I think there's even English throughout Normandy. I believe that this time it was contested. There's a lot of talk about contesting Normandy in this book. Yeah, there's a lot of mention of Normandy yeah. because Normandy was a part of France, was so, given to a Viking. Uh, oh yes. Yeah, given to like a Viking warrior or some royalty uh, in the Viking world. I'm not a historian, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> uh, and then it was it, it was still part of France, but it was ruled by the, these Normans, and then these Normans became very rich and then invaded England. And so like the uh, the Duke of Normandy, I believe he's called, then becomes the King of England. Yeah. So it's this it's... weird setup where the King of England is also a Duke of a piece of France mm -hmm. and the King of France doesn't like that. And there's, it's... I am, I'm probably butchering it, but that's the gist of that historical setup. Yeah, that's confusing, but a lot of stuff is going on right there. Yeah. So. That whole this whole time in, in in France and England and Europe in general, in 1300s mi the the middle of the medieval times is very interesting. Yeah, it, it explains why a lot of houses were surrounded by brick walls like 10 feet thick, and there was a lot of defensive positions just throughout the land because there, there was always talks about thieves and killers and yeah, raiding there parties. Could be bandits and raiders and Vikings at yeah, any moment. More Vikings than were the English or your there own you French are just people. plowing your field, <laughs> and then here yeah. comes a raiding party. Yep, burning your houses, murdering your children. And that was the normal way of life. <laughs> it was crazy. Times was a deadly time, man. Like, oh my god, or disease got to them. It's like man. But yeah, you were you were mentioning how this is a very litigious time. People, <laughs> uh, so Jean de Corrigus, when his wife gets raped by Legris. Uh, he goes to Count Pierre, his local lord, yep. and he knows he's not going to get a fair trial because Legris is his favorite. And he doesn't. So he doesn't. He doesn't even show up to court because he knows he's not going to get the outcome he wants. So once he's found not guilty, he then takes his case to Paris, to the king, to the, king. Uh, to the um, Palace of Justice, mm -hmm. and then presents his case. And then they decide that it's not... Uh, enough evidence to determine one way or the other, right? It's like he said, she said kind of deal. Yeah, but it took months because the king, you know, yeah, he they, never involved. They had to hire a lawyer. The king is a very <laughs> young man, yeah. and there's uh, not a lot that gets him out of his normal cycle of oh. being a king. So he finds this whole event very interesting. Because it was two dueling families well known throughout France, and the country was divided, right? That's how the king yeah. got really curious and involved because he didn't want to just make a decision because it would have torn the other half of France like into revolt or That's it would have right. started a whole yeah. you know, chaos yeah, the thing. The king didn't want to make a decision. So the reason why they have a duel is because back then they considered it like the will of God, right? Like whoever won, that was because God wanted them to win. And they were right and the other side was completely, you oh. know, and they died. So that's how, that's why they allowed duels to happen because they were like, well, we can't figure it out. So now let's leave it in the hand of God. And it wasn't just man against man or humans <laughs> against each other. There's a mention of a story about this person or someone killed a dog's owner. And this dog would always growl at one specific person that came around. I guess they, it was known, they were probably friends before or whatever. But he growled at this one guy and they took that as an accusation. So the dog and the man <laughs> went to court and they decided that since the dog couldn't talk, obviously they yeah. did the duel <laughs> to see who was, you know, correct in the eyes of God, like, yeah. you know, the honest person. So they dueled it out. The dog won. <laughs> so, <laughs> the dog was the hero in this yeah, case. He was the hero. I, I have he a won clue. the case. <laughs> so in 1300s France, they, they tried all kinds of different people for all kinds of different crimes. They also try animals animal. as well, right? So oh, yeah. Here's a quote. The court records are filled with murders, thefts, rapes, assaults, and other crimes. Mm -hmm. Animals, too, were tried and condemned. A cow that killed and ate an infant in the Rue St. Martin was dragged to the street and hanged. And another pig that mangled a child's face was sentenced to death by burning. A horse that killed a man and then escaped with his master's help 
was convicted of murder in absentia and hanged in effigy. <laughs> hanged into a horse. <laughs> <laughs> so there was, I mean, I get the pig mangling the kid's face, but man, that had to be a very uh, great smelling barbecue. They basically just cooked <laughs> right? the pig on the steak. Like, can the peasants eat the pig after? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, how does that work? We do that for fun now. Although the pig's not alive anymore. Like, uh, so. Yeah. And true. then the horse. So the horse okay. killed a man and then escapes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then it's found. So they hold. Oh. So they must hold like a uh, a court, right, with a lawyer representing the horse. Yeah, and the horse was there. Lawyer, just... Right, representing the family got murdered, but the horse is missing. So there's one lawyer in the palace of yes. justice, just like your honor. This horse didn't mean to do it. Where's your client? He ran off. He's a horse. He ran off. But they're like, yeah, I found this horse guilty, and uh, we need to exact our vengeance. So let's just make an effigy of a horse. Make an example of him. Perfect. So all of the other horses that are looking, they know. They'll see it and they'll know. You think they they did better it not murder in front of the stables, so these <laughs> horses are like witness. Yeah, because you're right. When they do, when they carry out the sentences of these crimes, they often have people around yeah. to watch it, right? So they yeah. probably rounded up all of the horses so they could watch well, it. And they know. <laughs> yeah, it, it's insane. It's kind of like the medieval times, like the tournament, but instead of <laughs> spectators like paying crowds, it's just the whole town waiting to see. Yep. Yeah. So uh, they they go to court. Uh, they the court decides that they should duel it out and it's a yeah. very elaborate affair right yeah oh and it wasn't done for the past 80 years yeah it's a very rare thing that happens mm -hmm. and, and it's very elaborate so they, you can't just simply go out and say i duel you and then chop each other to pieces yep. it's i this thought whole, it was gonna be like that yeah you can imagine like lo the the law today is very complex elaborate and takes a lot of time right you got to go to all these different court hearings and mm -hmm. paper workers e even involved yeah. um so they got to do all of these things before they can even step on the field of battle and duke it out it's crazy yeah they prepared the field a few times built us they, they built like a little stadium yeah they, the king, they the built nobles. a little stadium with walls you know what's interesting is like you think the people that are going to show up to watch this battle, they're going to be like cheering and drunk oh. and like all of this stuff. But it's very strange because when everybody shows up to see this battle, they must, by law, be very quiet. Because they don't want to rooting for the hometown hero or whatever. They don't want to give one guy the advantage over the other guy, right? Yeah. Like if he's being booed, he's probably like, man, maybe I am guilty. Let me just give up or not try as hard. So they don't want to give anyone the yeah. advantage. The and idea is that everybody they're supposed to both be equal, right? Yes. Nobody's supposed to have an advantage. They all have the exact same sword, exact same mm -hmm. armor, exact same horse. The field is exactly level. Everything exactly. is equal. Yeah. And if anyone in the crowd interfered in any way, throwing a pebble, shouting, or providing you know anything that could benefit one guy or the other, whether it did or didn't, off with their head. Yes, immediately. <laughs> Their hand got chopped off, they died. It was just insane. There so, was no way you go to jail. Like, so <laughs> all of these silent peasant zombies are watching this <laughs> battle. And up off to the yeah. left, or mm -hmm. right, I'm not sure, but off Marguerite. to the side is Marguerite, right? Who's standing and watching because if her husband dies because she was also in court. And she's the one that pointed the finger at Legris and said, that dude raped me. She is now accountable if yeah. God finds her to be telling a lie, right? Like if God decides that Chris wins, she's obviously lying and she must be burned alive at the stake That's how they saw for it. being a liar. Yep. Her husband <laughs> dies, she dies, and her family name, their family So you're telling me this bullshit. woman gets raped and then she <laughs> has the audacity, the courage to bring <laughs> it up and say, this man raped me. And now she must put her own life on the line mm -hmm. and her husband's life on the line to prove it. Yeah. So Talk about hashtag me too, bro. <laughs> that is some courage. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's insane. Because even back then, like, she couldn't just go to court and say, hey, this dude raped me. She had to convince her husband to go to court for her because she's not a human being. She's property of mine. Yeah, she, she couldn't go to court herself. Her husband had a represent. She's, she's no better than that horse that was brought into court. All right. <laughs> And it was interesting because before they even took it to court, they had a family meeting to talk about the event. Yeah, should we do this? And she had to pretty much remember everything that happened and talk about it in detail several times while they discussed it. Yeah, like, she how does that, that, like, 
That, that's got to be rough. Yeah, she was raped. And it's a fairly violent affair, too. Um, yeah, yeah. And she had to first convince her husband, and then she had to convince her family, like her brother-in-laws, her brothers, and her cousins. cousins and, and then all of those men then had to go to Paris, convince the Palace of Justice that she should be heard. Mm -hmm. um, and then she had to recount her story to everybody in the Palace of Justice, lawyers, the king had to hear it. She had to tell everybody what happened to her, and she had to be spot on with the details. If she was inaccurate or misspoke or didn't remember anything, she would be called a liar. Exactly. And at the, at the time everything happened, she was found to be pregnant. So Which, whose kid is it? Well, <laughs> right. It's, it's important to note that her and her husband were married for several years before. And they they tried to have children but couldn't. Mm -hmm. And then he comes back from that failed expedition in England. They have a short window where they could have done it and then she had gotten yep. pregnant. But in that short window is also the time where she gets raped by Legris. Correct. So people start questioning that. And at the same time, that's used in court as evidence of this rape. Like, no, she got pregnant at this time, so that can't be. No, no, no. I think back then they thought that if you were raped as a woman, you could not get pregnant. Oh, yeah, yeah. Good thing they you had this up. weird idea that if you were raped, yeah. women just couldn't simply not get pregnant. They just sh shut it off like a valve. Exactly. <laughs> I guess sperm knew that it was time for babies or not. Yeah. You know? like, this is wrong. Let's get out of here. <laughs> this is wrong. We're not going to go to the egg sack. No, nope. we're just going to drop off. <laughs> Like, I don't know what, where their Did minds were egg sack? So you think there's an egg sack in there? <laughs> <laughs> ovaries, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Just knocking on the door of those ovaries. <laughs> Bring those eggs out. <laughs> but yeah, it, it was insane how they were thinking that women that got raped, they couldn't have gotten pregnant. They had a lot of very and, and strange if they did, it was their fault. And the book also talks about that women got harsher sentences for... Like if a woman stole, off with her head. If a guy stole, uh, give us some coin, do some extra hours in the field, you're fine. Yeah. It's, it's insane. So it's, it's very weird because back in those times, 1300s France, they were very religious, right? Very Christian. They Everything they did had to be uh, followed or started with a prayer and their devotions to God. But also, don't forget, they must ward off all witchcraft. <laughs> Remember, like they are, yeah. uh, when they go to the field of battle, they must present all oh their weapons God. and they must be inspected uh, for <laughs> any kind of like witchcraft or spells or magical jewels. And then the, they don't want enchanted weapons <laughs> on the field. <laughs> the uh, knights must swear they're not using enchanted uh, oh weapons. Just re it's this it's weird insane. mix of like Christianity and like paganism. And they yeah. believed in both <laughs> equally. It's hard to believe. Yeah, it's hard to believe. <laughs> yeah. It's... So this story is, is like a very good historical account of that specific time yeah, in history. It's insane. It's very good. They're talking about the king of France at that time, which they don't get too much into. They're talking about like the organizational structure of the aristocracy. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're talking about like the geographic layout of that time in France and England. That's pretty good. The relationship. This is considered the last duel or called the last duel because this is the last sanctioned official duel in France. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's many duels after that in France, but they're not sanctioned by the king or the palace of justice. As you know, there's duels Correct. that happen in America. Uh, the most famous one is probably with Alexander Hamilton. But they're always, after this point, off to the side and did like in the shadows and not with a huge yeah. uh, Or just know, by audience. sport. Yeah. But nothing so, with court proceedings and the yeah, legal system. It's nothing to do with the legal system. It's always outside the law. What's interesting about de Corrigus, is that he's in what they call the last duel, but he's also spends time in the Holy Land in what's called the Last Crusade. Ooh. So this guy yeah. in Corrigus has a very long history with the military Man. and the and French. All of France. Like, didn't he help warn them of the Turkish like invasion? Yeah. So the he's Islamic. a very interesting guy. Yeah. yeah. And his name pops up every now and then in historical documents. Yeah, and for for being at war and battle and all over, getting sick a few times. He survived a long time, right? Yeah. That's crazy. He, you're right. He, he became yeah. an old man, and being old in the medieval times was rare. Yeah, especially with him. He's always off fighting just for money or just to do it. So. Yep. Again, that's where he found his fame and fortune was in battle, where Legris, on the opposite side, was more of like the uh, person that liked to hang out with the royalty and go to parties yeah, and make the politicians. 
wasn't about the duel uh, in that it was more like two families going at it, kind of like the Hatfields and McCoys here in America, mm -hmm. right? It, it was a story about how these two families, once friends, then become arch enemies, uh, and all of the different like things they do to each other to get back at each other. Yep. And, and this is just like the climax. So this was going to be made into a movie. Uh, I believe uh, Adam Driver is going to be Legris. Mm. Uh, Matt Damon is going to be uh, Jean de Corgis, I believe. Uh, and then Ben Affleck is going to be in there, of really? course. With Matt Damon, you got to have Ben Affleck. He's going to be King Charles. Can't wait to see the movie. So. Yeah, it's going to be pretty good. So you recommend this book? Yeah, yeah. Definitely recommend it. Just as mentioned, the first two chapters or so are a little rough because it, it looked to be just a historical bunch of facts thrown at you. But get through it. Yeah, get through that. And then it, it's very interesting just the way medieval france and a little bit of britain they go over britain a little bit how they worked and just how the people lived through that time it was rough <laughs> so if you were alive geez. in the 1300s france you definitely want to be yeah. rich you yeah do not want to be poor rich or you know how to defend yourself yeah yeah rich and good with the sword yeah that'll get you right that'll get you through life no witchcraft <laughs> don't even have the whisper of a witchcraft going on it's all right how about you, Tony? Would you recommend it? Yeah, I would recommend it. Like you said, you just mm -hmm. get through those initial chapters and then you will be immersed in this story. It's very good. All right.